Test, test. Okay, so this is my first video uh, with the UL Crown uh, tank. It's a brand new tank, and here I've been using the 0.5 ohm coil. But I think it's about time I start using the RBA. So here we've got the RBA base. I've left the screws in because it's a bit of a pain uh, to fiddle with them in front of the camera. Um, and here I have got a pre trimmed coil. I think it comes. the uh, RBA kit comes with two of these. Uh, so uh, I've, I said I've cut it short just to make the video a bit easier because it can be quite fiddly doing all this through a viewfinder. Okay, so before we put this coil in, I'm just going to loosen the screw slightly because uh, one of them's a bit looser than the other, and it's slightly easier just to push the coil in once they're uh, a bit looser. So what you want to do is try and put one foot of it under the screw on the one side uh, with the coil facing upwards not down uh, same on the other side uh, you've got to try and slot it and balance it under the screws which can be a bit tricky uh, which is quite surprised I did it first take here so once it's in place you need to then tighten the screws very gently on either side it's like I'm going to do here so first one very gently There you go, and you want to just push it over a little bit to line it up. And then we do the other one. Just tighten them a little bit at a time, because if you try and do one too tight, you won't be able to move the coil over if it's in the wrong place. And it's quite important with this to have the coil central, well, from previous experience anyway. So use a screwdriver to kind of drag it over a bit, and then tighten it. Now once we've got these tightened off, I'm just going to give it a quick check to A, make sure it's central, and B, make sure it's too tight, because you don't want these uh, screws coming loose or something. Once you've actually got everything in and it's, uh, it's all wicked and stuff, especially with the wicking process, you really don't want the coil to come loose, otherwise you'll pretty much have to start all over again. So for stability, I'm just going to put it into the um, bottom of the atomizer here. I can't remember the actual name. Just screw it in nice and tight. And I'm just gonna I've actually used this coil before, so it's got a little bit of residue on it which I'm just gonna burn off. And also burning it off burning it off is a good chance to uh to check if the coil is actually heating evenly. So I'm just putting it on top of my uh mod here and I'm just gonna uh burn it in at a nice modest fifty watt. So with it on just keep your hands well away from it. Just gently just tap on it. And it should burn from the centre of the coil outwards, as you can see here. So go from the middle to the edges. So just pulse it a few times, and that will just burn off all the excess, like so. Okay, so once you've done this a few times, we can remove this from the mod. And be careful here, because obviously the coil and sort of around the RBA can be very very hot so uh, try not to touch it on your skin because it will hurt so I'm going to very very carefully remove this here I'm just checking that the coil is still nice and straight and while it's in this area yep yeah, so there's a if you, the two middle ones are a little bit too close together so it's a good idea to try and push them out but I'm just going to take it off this first loosen it off. It is quite hot. I'm just going to strain it up one more time. Because if you heat it up and it gets that hot, it can distort out of shape a little bit. So, I'm just off the camera here, I apologise. Sometimes it's quite hard to do this through a viewfinder and still make sure it's uh, in front of the camera. So, we now have a burned in coil. Get the vape juice off your hands otherwise you drop everything. Okay, now it's time to cut a bit of cotton. Okay, so now it's to cut the cotton. So this is some Japanese organic cotton. You want to take probably about, I don't know, half a centimetre? Eighth of an inch or something? I don't know. Strip about this thick anyway. It's a little bit bent and ragged, this cotton, but I know it's good cotton anyway, so it does a job. The stuff that came with it is it's good cotton, but it's just got a bit of a weird flavour to it. So what you're going to want to do is just lick the tip of your fingers just so you can wet it down and just start twisting it into a point uh, 
because otherwise you, you don't want it to catch as it goes through but don't twist too far, I twist just over halfway down here because there will be some wastage unfortunately there you go, just slot it through the middle this is why it's important because you've got to pull it through a bit here which is why it's important to make sure that early on we screwed the coil in that it's definitely going to stay in place because when you're trying to drag this through I've had it quite a few times before when it's just popped the coil out of the springs and we just have to go from from scratch again so you want to just pull it through so it's fluffy on the one side you've probably got about a centimeter maybe or so of cotton on that side and if you fold it up in the middle together you want to cut it off on the side you pulled through at roughly the same height as the other side so you just want to fluff it up a little bit here otherwise it won't uh, take the juice properly okay now it's fluffed up a bit so as I said earlier cutting off roughly the same height as the other one nice clean cut there we go so we end up with this that's kind of some kind of mad hairdo Okay, off camera again, I apologise. I'll get better at this. Okay, so this is the sort of, I don't know what you call it, the cylinder part of the tank. Uh, some of them screw on. I had, uh, I've had Kangatech RBAs before which screw on, which can be really frustrating because everything in that tank screws, but uh, this is a nice simple push fit and it's got little grooves to make sure it's in the right place. So just pop that on there and clicks into place. Nice and easy. Okay, so this is where it starts to get a little bit fiddly. You've got to start to... Uh, I, I use a very small flathead screwdriver and you just very gently you just want to start poking it down the sides of the coil. Sometimes it's quite hard when you first just put the wick through because you can't really see what you're doing. Once again, I apologise for being off frame a little bit. I do uh, fix this a little bit later in the video. So what I'm doing here, even though you can't see it, is just very gently poking it down into the sides of the tank with the flathead screwdriver. There you go, so back and frame. So you can see I'm very just I'm poking it down right to the bottom and I'm trying to push it all the way. I don't want too much under the actual centre of the coil. So you see I'm pushing it towards these little vents in the side, which is where the juice is going to be absorbed from. So you want to push it right up to them to make sure you're not going to get any dry heads from it. There you go, and it's nice and clear down the middle of it as well to make sure that you can still drag air through it properly, otherwise you'll end up with well, a very tight drawer on it. just want to refine it a bit. This can take a while but the longer you spend doing this the better result you'll get first time. And this is just a good idea here to make sure that the gaps between you, sort of the, the rings of the coil are almost as best as you can exactly the same because it keeps it heating evenly so it can get squashed a bit when you're dragging the cotton through so just use the tip of the screw over here to try and get sort of an even, even gap between the coils. Okay, so this looks about done. Just a few more adjustments here. As I said, the better you make it when you're first building it, the better vape you'll get later down the line. I mean, this isn't perfect by any means, but for the purpose of the video, you don't want to watch me sitting there for 10 minutes, sort of going absolute perfect with it. So that's a rough idea. So I'm going to put some juice in here. So say strawberry and apple, 3 milligram, 85.15. So it's a nice cloud off this one and some really good flavour as well. I run this at 50 watts on the 0.5 ohm coils and you get a really good flavour out of it. What we'll get out of the RBA I don't know, but we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll find out. It's possibly best as well from experience with RBA coils to start at a slightly lower wattage than normal, otherwise you end up with some seriously hot hits, especially to start with before the cotton soaked, so you bring it right down to probably about 15, 20 to start with. So you just screw it back into the base here just a few drips before we do that just onto the sides here just to start the cotton wicking the juice away you'll see as you drip it in it slowly starts to get absorbed into the sides there you go. it's just dragging it in, liquid's disappearing and that's essentially what the 
uh, atomizer does when it's surrounded by a tank of vape juice. The juice just absorbs up to the sides there. It's important to try and make sure that gap's covered as well, because if it's not covered, then it, your uh, atomizer will probably flood, and that's when you get that, all that crackling sound, and also you'll probably get a load of juice coming up through the middle as well. So, just keep letting that soak in there. a good idea once you've done this to let it sort of stand for well as long as you can really I mean five minutes is the absolute minimum but ideally a couple of hours if, if you can wait that long okay slight jump cut here I had a problem with the uh, camera but here we go just uh, now, now I'm going to screw the atomizer back into the base here so it's all sort of drenched in juice I'm going to put it screw it nice and tight and now let's attach it onto the mod <coughs> to uh, sort of heat the juice up a bit. Now, there's different people say different things. I like to just gently burn it for a few seconds on a low heat just to kind of test that we've got everything working because you don't want everything screwed back together to find out that it's not going to do what it's supposed to. There you can see, yep, it burns the juice. Possibly a little bit high on the wattage here. But. Uh, it's off the soft frame here, but what I'm doing is basically just gently blowing on it just to make sure that uh, the juice is soaking through properly. So, as I said, good idea to turn it down a bit before you try this. So, as I said, pressing the button, there we go. Then it nicely spits a little bit, so keep it well away from your face because uh, boiled vape juice can hurt, especially if it gets in your eyes. Yeah, so we can see this is working properly. If you look closely, there's a few little burned bits around the coil. That's uh, possibly due to the fact I was using it on 50 watts right from the start, which uh, is not a good idea. So, quick jump cut again while I was just uh, burning it in for a little bit longer because uh, you know, I just like to make sure it's properly working before I all put it back together. So, I'm just going to put the tank back on here. Make sure to do it, make sure the tank's the right way up and you aim the atomizer down into it, otherwise you'll do what I've done many times before and just pour vape juice all over the place which is a, uh, it's not ideal so here we go, if we test it we've got a nice working coil air vents fully open this one I'm just going to uh, put the wattage up a little bit just to uh, test it. There's a point to note here that I, uh, I'm recording the narration after I did this video and I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, using it on 50 watts on an RBA coil that's just been built is not a good idea um, because what I essentially vaped earlier was boiled vape juice and it was quite painful and possibly the driest and most burnt hit I've ever had so yeah, don't do that. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, check out my channel for more videos like this.